Hey friends, today we're going to take a look at setting up the Atomic Funk Project PA system. Um, so we just loaded into a ballroom, and these are the components to the system. We've got uh, two subs and two top speakers, some stands, a rack, and a bunch of other stuff. So uh, at the moment, we're going to get the stage set up. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do as soon as your speakers and racks are set up is you want to make sure that you get the router connected and your iPad charging. Chances are that the sound human that was there before you did not have a chance to charge your iPad. So here is the, uh, the tricky part. On the back of your router, you want to plug the power in and then you will find a uh, network cable that's in the back of the case. You want to plug that into slots one, two, three, or four. You do not want to plug it into the slot that says internet. Let's just make sure that you can see that here. Power, slot four. You can also use slot one. So while we're getting this done, we'll get our router set up. And then I carry a little uh, multi-port outlet thing, but we do have chargers that are in the bottom of the case. So I'll show you. So where this is the uh, Pelican that has all the mics in it. So it's on the very bottom layer of foam and there'll be little shore mic bags down here. Um, so there's one for the iPod and there's one for the iPad, but because I have my own, I'm gonna use my own. So here's our iPod for break music, and here's our cables that I can only yell at myself for wrapping sloppily because I was the last person that had this PA, so just get that rocking. For whatever reason, the iPod doesn't like to hold a charge, so just be aware of that. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do is pop open your iPad. Uh, so just a note about the system at large. Um, on the DL32, outputs 15 and 16 are generally assigned as your left and right outputs. Um, some engineers, myself included, have things set up on a matrix so that 15 and 16 are still your main left and right, but 14 is the uh, mono sub. And then I have 13 set up as a press feed so that if uh, a video uh, person needs to have a full mix of the show, they can have access to that. Um, so the first thing that, you, that I would do is pop open your M32 uh, mix app. And then if you go to the scenes uh, tab up there, we have um, on every system with AFP, we have a AFP main and that's just a very generic start file. It configs the whole thing. Um, I'm gonna start that. It configs the whole show so that your main left and rights are, are um, the system. There's no VCAs assigned. We have all of the inputs already assigned. So kick, snare, overhead, bass, guitar, keys, you know, uh, conga, percussion, here's your saxes, here's your vocals. So all the standard stuff that we always use is showing up pre-assigned. Pre um, on channels uh, 1 through 20. Um, and if you're a new engineer to AFP, I highly encourage you to use this. Um, if if uh, you want to make your own show file from that, God, God bless you. Um, so my uh, file, as an example, uh, has everything assigned to VCAs and then it also has everything set up on a matrix. So, you know, if you start from somebody else's file, here's just a quick crash course on routing on the uh, on the M32C. If you want to see where everything's assigned, you can go to the routing tab right here. And this shows you your virtual outputs. These are outputs 1 through 16. If we click the virtual out, so as you can see, uh, outputs 15 and 16 are assigned to matrix 5 and 6. Um, in my matrix category, output 14 is called sub, 
output 13 is called video and then going down the line 12 is uh, 12 through 1 are all of our uh, mono in-ear mixes so we have the capability of doing 12 mono in-ear mixes and then we have an additional four for output so again my system runs uh, left right sub and then there's a separate uh, so if we need it for front fill we can use that or we can also use it for video so um, now that we know that, we're going to get some stuff plugged in. Hey, we have Andy on transport today. <laughs> um, so some of the first things that I like to do is uh, I find that wiring the rack from the bottom up is generally uh, very neat. Uh, so this is just my iPod cable for break music. We're just going to get that ready. Um, there are... And if, if you would like style points with this system, I pack our cable cases in the order that we will need them. So all the power, uh, the power goes on top with all the signal in the middle um, so that you can pull things out of the case in the order that you're building the stage. So if it just helps uh, expedite things. Uh, so as far as building the rack goes, I like to start with the snake. So we have our main input snake. This is our uh, in-ear snake, which is a 12, 12 channel fan. And then I actually made this little snake for our wireless mic. So I'm gonna talk about each one of these things as we plug them in. So uh, the first thing that we're gonna start with is this Whirlwind um, in-ear snake. So again, wiring from top to bottom seems to make the most logistic sense with this rack. Um, so on this, Th these are all wired one to one. There's 12 inputs on this IO panel and there's 12 channels on this snake. So we're just going to start with channel 12, 11, 10, 9, and so on. Okay, so this is the input section to this bottom rack. All of the input signals on this rack are fed through here. Um, the I.O. panel above this, these are your outputs for each mix. So this is your drum mix, your percussion mix, your bass mix, etc. So I just like to wrap this cable nice and neat like that. And shove that under the rack. And then we can patch our DL32. So again, starting, we're going to start with 12, 10, patched out of order but you get the idea so once that is set up I just like to tuck that in there so that's nice and neat now for the wireless mics uh, we have four channels of wireless mics with this rig uh, and they are 13 14 15 and 16 they patch directly into these outputs right here one two three and four one two three and four are the outputs for these receivers right here this is just a convenient way to looping them now all the systems have uh, four short XLRs um, that are specifically for this purpose in the case. Where they're at in the cable case, I have no idea, but they're definitely in there. But for me, just being a, a bit OCD, I just made myself a little snake because, well, I'm a bit OCD. Okay. Four. Here's two. Okay, plug our DJ line in. This is gonna be right. And your DJ is 3132 on the DL. 32. Okay, so when you're done, it should look something like this. So the next stage that I like to do is I, instead of making a track sheet, I like to label my snake as the stage box. Um, and this is, you know, standard for festival kind of patches, but um, I like to do this because it, it just is a quick way of uh, knowing where your input should be so that you, you can look at it in the, in the quiet right now before any of the band gets here. Um, and uh, you can figure out what your inputs are. So I like to uh, write the inputs on the snake and then I like to uh, also assign them on the iPad simultaneously. So I carry spike tape with me. Um, I would recommend that you maybe do the same, but there are two rolls of gaff um, in, the, uh, in the system. 
So tonight's band is uh, guitar, bass, drums, keys, and a tenor sax player. So as far as the snake goes, I like to arrange the snake based on uh, where the farthest people away from the rack are. So in this particular instance, I try to keep it by the drummer, so we'll go. So looking at channel one here, this will be channel one on the snake. Kick, snare, hi-hats, tom one, tom two. You can't rattle me, boys. Yes, it's straddle, not rattle. Oh, straddle. Keyboard works. <laughs> the guitar player and the keyboard player, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, sweet Adele, huh? Look, it's and if you, if you work a gig with us, you wow. get Italian pastry. Look at that. It's also a lot. We are lopsided here. <laughs> We have a joke uh, with AFP that you either have to be Italian or your name has to be John. All right, we'll call this tenor. And then we will also add Pierre. Are you, are you the MD tonight? I am. And Pierre's our MD. MD, we also have a DJ that's playing tonight, so we'll call this DJ left, DJ right. And these are going to be our ear mixes down here, drum, bass, key, guitar, okay. And I just put this down on the snake, just like that. All right, and then we'll patch a bass track sheet that we made on the snake. So going back to channel one, we go one through five, kick is channel one. Okay, so we're we're patched down the line one through eight. The next patch we're gonna have is our tenor player, and because we only have one tenor, that is gonna be channel nine on our snake. Channel nine on our snake, and we are gonna patch that into channel eleven on the console. And then we also have our MD talk pack mic, which is going to be channel 10 on the snake. That patches to channel 18. That's our pre-fader uh, pre MD comm mic so that the MD can talk to the band. And then we have our DJ lines, which are arbitrary. We can assign this anywhere. We'll plug that in in a hot minute. That's uh, not a traditional thing with the band, so I'm not gonna show you that. Now we have our ears. So our drum ear is 17, drums, 18 is bass, uh, keys is 19, and guitar is 20. All right, so I'm just gonna keep that snake set up and out of the way before the band gets here. And then once they do, we can decide what we're going to use. Now let's get our um, let's get our speakers patched. Okay, so here is our power box for our subs. You know the system the system doesn't draw a lot of power, but obviously if you can keep that on separate circuits, that is ideal. Now you let me ask yourself: Should I have run this before? The answer is yes, I should have run power first. So we'll put that right here. And this is a weird stage tonight. Uh, we are way wider than we are deep. So again, neatness, if you can be as neat as you can. Um, I keep all of the uh, IEC cables uh, linked together. So we're just gonna plug our subs in here for power and we'll do our top cabinet now I like to leave our, our cases on we've got the RCF factory cases for these I like to leave them on but you can take them off some engineers with us take them on or, we, or take them off I like to leave them on um, so as far as signal goes uh, looking at the eye of the amp section of this you know you just feed it um, you want to make sure that your your switch is on line and not on mic, and there's just a little EQ curve. You can keep it flat or you can put a boost in. To be honest with you, I don't really know what that does. I just leave it flat. 
Um, so for a room like this, um, I need a little bit more height on the speakers. So one hack is to uh, set the speaker stand up upside down. So this would technically be the top. And if you're a little guy like me, uh, it helps you. <laughs> so we're, I'm just gonna climb on the sub. And my back is resting on the speaker. And you just pull the safety pin, unscrew this, and then you can raise this until it clicks into place. All right, so we've got this guy set up. I had to have uh, some assistance. Our, our poles got misaligned, but anyway, uh, I like to keep these high because singers singers are going to be on plane with the with the speaker right here. So you know, if you have a singer that is not super loud, uh, you are more prone to feedback if your speakers are low. So I like to keep these as high as I can. Okay, so this is the uh, left the left hand side of the stage. This is going to be output 15. So even, even though I have my stuff set up, my um, speaker set up on a matrixy, um, I still want to keep that. I still have that uh, wiring scheme. So this is going to be 15. Um, now this is going to be a little different on my system because again, I have it set up on a matrix. Um, my sub is going to be set up on output 14. And this is going to be a mono output. Um, so I need to link my subs together. So I'm going to take the uh, output here out of the other subwoofer and run that across the stage to link them together. So I'm going to get the other speaker wired up and then we'll tune the PA. Okay, so the PA is up and powered on. So the first thing that I like to do is use one of our uh, condenser microphones. So I always start with an, ooh, there's a lot of lipstick on that. Let's use another one. <laughs> uh, let's use our condenser microphone. I have music lips. Um, I'll just make sure that everything is powered on. This is why we check these things. Okay. So generally, uh, to start this process, I will take my uh, vocal mic that I'm going to use to check the system and I'll flatten it uh, just keeping a high pass filter. Um, one of the benefits of setting your uh, system up on matrices is you get another level of EQ. Uh, so for this I'm just flattening my main left and right so this is the EQ that is feeding the matrix. Uh, we're going to take our, this is, how shall we say, our tonal or our color EQ over the left and right, and this is the sub EQ. So I'm going to back off these uh, filters. So I have a, I have a Butterworth 24, uh, 24 dB per octave filter uh, at high and low passes. Uh, so let's, so I generally start with the subs, so let's listen to the subs. So if we go into our matrix level, we're going to take our mains down. And generally, I like to just go over and verify that these things are on. That is on. Okay. Okay, so this is on. So I like to listen to the subs in solo first. Let's see how we can tighten these up. So I'm really juicing my sub send right now and they're nice and tight. So I'll open up this high pass filter or low pass filter rather and you can see how they just get real boxy sounding. But as we bring this down, so we're, you know, we're at 24 dB per octave. We're realistically crossing at like 75 kind of thing. Okay, so that's sounding good. Let's bring our mains in. All right, this room is 200, 600 e kind of thing. I'm gonna get this done. All right. So I'm gonna bring my matrixes back up, bring our subs in. Okay, so this is just talking into the vocal mic here. Two, 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 hey, two, two, two. Okay, so we're a little thin because we've got our high pass filter engaged, so we're going to take that down. Um, and the first thing that I like to do is sort of make some, some squirrel noises here. 
Okay, so that's where it wants to ring. So I'm gonna go into my main left and right EQ. So basically, I just want the PA system to ring. Okay, so now that we have our, our problematic frequencies uh, knocked out, the vocal mic sounds pretty decent uh, flat. So what I like to do is go back into our main left right matrix here and just maybe do some tonal things in the mid range. This is actually a really nice sounding room, so it doesn't require a huge deal of or a great deal of uh, EQ. So I can go back into my vocal channel EQ and just bring my eye pass filter up. Hey, 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 oh yeah. And then maybe another cut at 300 here, down at 1K and take some top end of off. Okay, so the ideal way of ringing out a PA system is you should be able to talk right in front of these speakers and do horrible things like that. And it's not awful. So let's find out where that wants to ring. Not all problems can be solved with EQ, but a lot of them can. Right around 750. So you know we're doing we're doing awful things. It's there. So you know the idea is if you have somebody giving a speech in the middle of the dance floor, uh, oftentimes they uh, are not using proximity effect uh, to their, their liking. Uh, so you can see my voice is really thin. So as I gain this up, we're, doing, we're, we're using a lot of gain. So I want to know where the sound system is going to ring here. OK, it's like. So with a gained up microphone, or somebody talking into a speech like this, hey, hey, yeah. Okay, we're still going to try.